and welcome back to Star Citizen Addicts Anonymous. I'm Nikki Batgirl D'Angelo, your host. In today's video, we're going to talk a little bit about my comeback, and we're going to talk about my impressions of CitizenCon and where the game is going. I will be avoiding some of the controversy, not because I don't want to stir the pot, fuel the fire, but because I really need to look into it a little bit more. I am one of those people that bought a Galaxy. I don't think I did it for base building. I'm pretty happy in the direction that CIG is heading for base building, and I hope that the future will bring many more ships and equipment and drones, etc., that can aid in the building of our bases. So with that said, we'll move on. Due to prior commitments, I was unable to go to Manchester for CitizenCon. And this year, I was working throughout the whole convention. So I got a chance to see it the way I always do, which is after CitizenCon is over, and I get to watch all of the different videos of all the panels as they're released by CIG. Now, I do have to say, before we go any further, that the Squadron 42 first chapter was amazing. And that's something I've been waiting to see for a while. It is so amazing to see how well the production of the game has progressed over the past decade. But to be waiting for it for another two years, I kind of understood that that was a possibility. I do have some inside information that I'm scared to even mention here. But Squadron 42 is different from Star Citizen. Star Citizen is a living entity. It is something that's never going to be done and is just going to flow into a released status when all of the features are in it. And then it will just keep on getting developed and updated over the years that people will be playing it. Kind of like EVE Online, World of Warcraft, etc. Squadron 42, however, is that single player triple A gaming experience, a space opera typical of anything Chris Roberts has put out before. And like Wing Commander, we only expected it to run on the highest end PCs. But things have changed. Consoles have come a long way. There's Steam Decks and ROG Allies and Legion Goes. There is a plethora of hardware that this game may run on. Not the current hardware, though. I have to say that this 2026 release date just happens to coincide with the releases of the future upgrades to PlayStation and Xbox. Now, I have inside information, right? And I'm not going to give it all out here, but what I'm going to say is this is going to be on Xbox. This is going to be on PlayStation. And if you're shocked by that, it means you haven't been listening to the community and listening to what they've been saying about it. This is going to be everywhere. And eventually, eventually, it will be on Steam. But I think that will be the last place that they release it. I think it will be released on their own platform, on Xbox and PlayStation first. And it needs to be because this gaming experience needs to be in front of as many people as it can possibly be. And you can look at the controls today and how they are built for the console and for the PC. And I can't wait to see it on those brand new 6th, 7th generation. I don't even know what generation the Xbox and PlayStation are in. I guess it would be 5th generation, right? So over the last year, I've been playing a lot of my games on the Steam Deck. Now, for a while, I was able to get Star Citizen to play there, but Easy Annie Cheat makes it almost impossible. And the performance was meh. And then I tried to play it on the ROG Ally, and performance was better than meh, but still meh. But AMD has new processors coming out, and even Apple is able to show that gaming is possible on integrated systems. Intel has made huge strides, and I have a feeling that there might even be a handheld experience at some time in the future. I'm not going to say it's going to release that way, because... I think the hardware has to be there for it, but I have no idea what two years of hardware innovation will bring. Now, I had many, many, many 
ideas of what this game was going to be. And in the end, I thought it was going to be more of an open world, more of you go here, you go there. But it does seem like it's going to be on rails. And that's not unusual for a Chris Roberts game. Now, when you have games like Elden Ring and you have games like, oh, Grand Theft Auto, but that's Star Citizen, right? It, it, it's it, it, those are the games that people play most, right? I, I see people playing Elden Ring and even Jedi Survivor, right? I, I, I enjoyed that game and it was pseudo open world. And this just feels like it's going to be a game on rails. And that does not distract me from what I want. I want that experience. I want that feeling of being the main character in a movie. And I think that's what we're going to get here. I'm going to reserve the right to hold on to the rest of my opinion until we see more of the game. And we might get that opportunity next year. Now, last year, Citizen Con was in L.A. This year, it was in Manchester. Next year, it's nowhere. There's no Citizen Con. Instead, they're going to have multiple events centered around Squadron 42 in multiple cities. And that's something that I hope will bring a little bit more of what the game is going to be. Now, we've seen all the sizzle reels. We've seen the first chapter, and I don't want to see more than that. But I want to know how much freedom do we have in this game? And what is next, right? We've waited so long for this, and now you have the technology, and you have the people, and you have the, the, the studios. Is there going to be more? And that's something I can't wait to see. So stepping away from this game and coming back, it, it gives me a little bit of that feeling that somebody brand new is going to have when they come into the game. When you just look at the Keybinds page, there are so many of them, it could send somebody screaming and, and you know, in, in fear over how much needs to be done. It is true that you could jump in this game, have a mid-level to low-end computer and use your mouse and keyboard, but the immersion of that is going to be greatly limited. And I know I just had that statement about Squadron 42 coming out on the console, but that's a different game. This game, we are doing so much more. And there's so much in here. And all I'm saying is that I am grateful that CIG is thinking about that in the way that they are going to prepare new people to become a citizen in the game. Now, with the storyline that's going to bring them through all the different occupations, I think that is one of the biggest things that is going to be in Star Citizen 1.0. And yes, for those of us that have been playing the game for a long time, that's not going to make a lot of difference. But we want more people in this game. We want our orgs to be like test and have a thousand people in them. We want this game to succeed and it will succeed with that one addition. All right, so I'm going to do a few of these videos. We're going to stop right after the next one. Base building. Now, we talked about it at the very beginning and I said I don't want to revisit controversy. But base building, this, this game is kind of being a survival game. Now, I've hosted Chris in my house. I've I'm friends with Sandy. I've taken care of her children. And there's one thing I could say that Chris, myself, and his children have in common. And that's our love for survival type games. Valheim, Satisfactory, etc. And I think, you know, that mentality, that immersion into that world that his daughters like is actually fueling the direction of base building in this game. And I like it, right? So you have to build your base piece by piece, get power, make some kind of a relationship with some kind of a guild to be able to get shields on your base, shields on your planet, shields on your star base. I think this is going to be one of the best pieces of the game. I, I, you have your own place. Now, there are some things that scare me right? I know there's going to be eventually hundreds of planets, but let's be serious. We're going to start off with a few places that you can build right off the bat, right? So it's going to be Pyro, 
It's going to be Stanton, and I'm sure that's where they're going to test the base building. So there's many planets and moons across there. Now, some people were scared that it would look like Star Wars Galaxies. Now, for those of you that don't know, that was an amazing game that only failed because they tried to open it up for everybody. They made it a little bit simpler and a little bit easier to become a Jedi and changed the whole game entirely, calling it the new game experience, NGE. And that's when I stopped liking it. And soon after, the game went away. But they had homesteads that you could build there. And let me tell you, Tatooine looked like Coruscant. <laughs> there were homesteads everywhere. But there was also towns and mayors. And, and that is something that I'm hoping that we can do. Now, what's making me like this better here is that there are going to be all these planets and all these moons that we could build on. And there's so much area across all of these worlds, all of these moons, that even a million people are going to be able to find a place to put their homestead. Now, I'm hoping that there'll be mechanics that you could have a homestead and then have your friend's homestead next to you and another friend and another place close to you, and you could start building communities. And that could be how your org grows its presence in a certain area. And then you could manage them with like a governor or a mayor or some kind of a regent. And that would be amazing. Now, this is my forward, not my full review, not my full ideas of what's going on with the game. I have a lot more reading, a lot more video watching to do. I've watched through the CitizenCon videos multiple times, and I know what I want to say, but I want to go into the game and experience what's there before I start talking about some of the changes and some of the things that have been removed from 4.0. I'd rather have Pyro and the Jump Point come out now than some features that aren't ready to be implemented to hold it back yet again. We were promised Pyro for years, and we need to expand the universe that Star Citizen lives in, right? We need to have that extra planetary system, that extra star system. Sorry. It, it has to happen. We've been in Stanton for 13 years. It's time to move on. And I am so excited that it's coming before the end of the year that I can let go of some of the disappointment of the features that they're pulling out for now. All right, we'll get back to this in a day or so as I look through all of my notes and I put together another video. Each of my next videos are going to be a little bit more concise and a little bit more directed towards a single topic instead of trying to cover multiples. I used the B-roll from my day and a half of coming back to Star Citizen and getting used to the game. I am waiting on my Evo throttle so I could start flying in six degrees of freedom the way it was supposed to be. And when that happens, I'll probably start streaming again. Folks, it's good to be here. I haven't gone anywhere. I've just been doing different things. And I'll say this, running a YouTube channel is a second job. If you don't think so, Go ahead and try to make one. And you really have to have a burn for it to keep it going. And I did. And I'm not saying that I am going to come back and be as regular as I was before. But what I will say is that I miss it more than I want to be away from it. So hopefully you'll be back watching my videos and hopefully I'll be able to get back to creating the content that you came to my channel for in the first place. Thank you all. I appreciate your views. And if you could leave some comments below, click that thumbs up button if you like this video and please subscribe if you want to see more. And with that said, you all be safe out there and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much for watching my videos. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking in the button in the upper left. You can support the channel by going to Patreon by clicking the button in the upper right. 
On the left, you'll see my latest video, and on the right, you'll see a video that YouTube thinks you will like.